All right, you gotta go, man. You gotta go. Right, you gotta go. You're All wild. Right. That 10k viewers. <laughs> <laughs> this might be your platform, but respect okay, people when they come Okay, your okay, goodbye. Go, go, go. go. Yeah. Call everyone bro. Bro. Don't so don't call that's why she's angry. Get out. Get out. Get the get the get the f out of my apartment. Get out. That clip you just watched is of Hannah Pearl Davis. A 26-year-old YouTuber, the latest addition to the Manosphere, often referred to as the female Andrew Tate. Pearl runs a YouTube channel centered around the Manosphere, hosting some of the classiest women our society has to offer. Right, let's go there. You want to go back in the past and embarrass yourself again? Do you go want ahead. to scream? Go is that what you want? Let's go! Pearl's channel is heavily inspired by Kevin Samuels and Fresh and Fit. Women in general especially in the United States, England, whatever it may be, are not held accountable for their poor decisions. Men are trash. That's common in society, right? Women are trash isn't. Men are held accountable all the time, every day. All these women are born with value. They're pretty already. As a man, if you don't make yourself valuable, you have no value. Women are born with value. Men That's must create right. their value. A guy doesn't lose his value just because he picks the wrong woman once. Just if men are attracted to youth, beauty, and fertility. It's been that way since the beginning of time. Men, men value purity and youth. Purity, youth, beauty. You can really get those brain juices flowing as you tune into yet another episode of the groundbreaking discussion What's Wrong With Modern Women? Which are about as thought-provoking as an episode of Jerry Springer. Or alternatively, if that gets boring, you can tune into an episode of Why Men Cheating Is Actually Okay. Right, men really have to work to become attractive. That's why I laugh at y'all when you tell me, well, men shouldn't cheat and they shouldn't do this. Men have to bust their ass to become attractive to even be seen. What if a woman cheats? Can men accept that? <laughs> she belongs to the street. You don't think it's different for men and for women cheating? No. I actually think that like women like to be cheated on. But Pearl didn't always have these takes. In fact, she used to say the polar opposite, especially about Fresh and Fit, who she is now emulating. I know a lot of girls that actually waited till they were married and stayed a virgin until they were married. And I can tell you that the guys on Fresh and Fit podcast would never, they would never be able to pull a girl like that. It's interesting considering that Pearl's current branding revolves around telling women that their standards are too high and that if you want a high value man that you have to tolerate him cheating. People think I'm condoning cheating. People think I'm encouraging cheating. No. Like I think if a woman cheats, she's trying to leave you. If a man cheats, yes, yes, he's yes. just like, it's, it's, like it's like a handshake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> women act like this is the most unforgivable thing that he is the ultimate bad guy, the ultimate demon if he does this. I'm sorry, sometimes you contributed to it. And women take no accountability for that. And that he wants to go to the bar with his buddies because you make that shit a hell hole. Because you are so unpleasant to be around. And that man forgives you for all of that shit, but you can't forgive him for stepping out once, twice, you guys are you guys are crazy. <laughs> it's just a little cheating. No biggie. I think it's safe to say that Pearl has changed her business plan in order to make money off of the manosphere because people's opinions don't normally change so drastically in morality, especially in such a short amount of time. Now me, I'm not selling anything. Based on what I know through observation, her particular target audience is a male. This is where Pearl's content and marketing sits. She is constantly hitting pain points and triggers. The challenges and the pain points for her particular customer, client, and fan is not being heard, not being seen, not feeling valued, and not having access to women. So she talks about this constantly, right? And she's talking to women, right? Women which this particular customer, client, or fan does not have access to and wants access to. One way to draw in this particular customer is to continue to hit this customer's pain point over and over and over. And What's up with those modern women? Am I right, boys? Pearl even talks about this business plan in an interview with Yahoo News saying that she didn't know what her business would be yet, but basically that she wanted to be an influencer and build a brand. The plan? Make money off of single men on YouTube by regurgitating their talking points about women back to them as a woman. 
I feel like when men love women, it's like it's like women have more conditions for them to be like really in love. For a man to love a woman, she does not have to jump as through as many hoops and meet as many requirements as for a woman needs to love a man. Just like Fresh and Fit, Pearl spouts a lot of the same double standards that promote sociopathy, especially in teaching men to have destructive behaviors. Most men always get looked upon like they're not a hoe. Why is it different well, for women than get, it is for men? It's easy for us to get sex. And men getting sex is hard. Mm -hmm. So if they do what's hard, it's mm -hmm. valued. If we do what's easy, it's not. I am so enlightened by Pearl teaching us how being a man will magically eliminate all of the consequences of cheating. You know, like breaking your trust with your partner by lying to them, getting another woman pregnant that you now have to support, humiliating your wife, causing family dysfunction, and bringing home disease. For man cheats, yes, yes. it's like a handshake. That is one hell of a handshake, Pearl. And promoting promiscuity is a great way to help create the single moms that her podcast actively speaks out against. Their amazing strategy is they don't want to pass on resources to another man's kid. Like okay. that's why that's why they're repulsed by hoes. That's why they're they're repulsed by like other people's children. If single motherhood should be avoided, then perhaps Pearl should consider not contributing to the problem by promoting promiscuity to her male audience. If you're smart like Fresh and Fit or Pearl, you can just reframe promoting sociopathy to men as advocating for them, even if the only thing it does is promote dysfunction and make more men lonely by fear-mongering them about relationships. I feel like a lot of men have a good reason for, yeah. for avoiding marriage today. I love it. And so even, and even um, you can, a woman can seize your assets, even if you're just living together. It varies from state to state. I know the chat. But it's like if she leaves her stuff at your apartment for like a period of three months, she can literally seize your assets. We are just warning you of what female nature is. You're probably wondering by now, where is Pearl's ring? Well, I'm here to inform you that Pearl is single and unmarried at 26 years old. And the reason I decided to go to therapy is because um, in the next like five to seven years, ideally, you know, um, some things are out of your control, but ideally I'd like to be married. Which according to her is because she is too picky. You're single over a certain age, you're probably too picky. And I say that it's because she's too picky because she claims that 28 years old is pretty old to be getting married. What do men value? Third thing men value, youth. How are they getting youth when the average age of first marriage for women in the US is 28.6 years old? Pearl is lucky if she can get married by 28 years old because she's 26 and even if she met Mr. Wright today, you would still usually have to be engaged for at least a year and then usually people, if they're going fast, wait another year before getting married, putting her at 28 years old if they're going fast by today's standards. And Pearl doesn't have much long-term experience in dating either. According to this interview on Yahoo News and what Pearl says online about her dating experiences on various podcasts, she's only had a couple of boyfriends. If you can do the math of her being 23 in the Yahoo interview, they couldn't have been that long considering she just turned 26 in the past couple of months. And that got me interested in knowing who is Pearl picking considering that anytime a guy does something wrong, no matter what it is, she tells women to simply just pick better. Okay, so then you pick guys that cheat. I discovered that last year Pearl tweeted about a breakup she had, so I decided to go ahead and check the archives. And it turns out that Pearl actually got catfished by an obese man with two children on TikTok. Baby, when did we start dating? Yep, that's right. An obese man with two children on TikTok. And I point out that he's obese because Pearl is constantly dunking on fat girls. Why do I need to look at your roles? And then I have to go on social media. Then boom, whale. Boom, another whale. The cherry on top is that Pearl has been pretty adamant about men having children being a deal breaker for her. For me personally, I don't, I'm not into the guys with kids. That's not my thing. Instead of immediately breaking up with him for hiding two whole children from her, she instead takes him in to live with her and her family to mooch off of them. Because he, you know, he was homeless when I first met yeah. him. So I like moved him into my parents' house yeah. so he could get an ID. Too. Yeah, and so my Show parents put him, him like on our lease. Oh, so that was how like, and they like moved him in for like he lived with us for like a month. Meanwhile, Pearl is out here humble bragging about her bagging a rich one on podcasts. 
Oh, he, was, he was a millionaire. Too. Like it was just like he he didn't know what to do with it. How did you know a millionaire? He was on social media, and I saw he lived like kind of close to me, and so I made like videos saying like, "Oh, we should like hang out." What? Like, have you never seen those videos of girls like shooting their shots at guys? No. Like, publicly, I was on TikToks, and I did a video saying, "You know, when he's not doing this like comedic bit, he's actually kind of kind of fine." Like. I live in Chicago, you live in Chicago, we should like hang out. I am pretty confident that Pearl is referring to her ex, Wanya, in these instances because Wanya is from Chicago like the millionaire ex she talks about in the video. There are multiple articles saying that Wanya was homeless when he was around 22 years old. There's a small chance that I'm wrong, but it seems that the story does match up. I do find it funny that Pearl dating Wanya, or people know him as Angry Reactions, was framed as her bagging a rich one. Meanwhile, he actually moved on to date a more attractive redhead, and she's still single and unmarried. It seems like her advice on lowering her standards to get married isn't working out so well for her. Pearl has the absolute audacity to tell women to pick better when she literally got catfished by some girl's obese baby daddy on TikTok. Yeah, he has a lot of followers, but he ended up having to mooch off of her anyway, so. Not only does she regularly dunk on obese people, even taunting them in her TikTok bio before she got banned, but Pearl will even put all the blame on women for obesity in America, despite half the obese population in America being men. How can Pearl dunk on fat girls so often, considering that she has clearly neglected her own self-care? This video of her is only from one month ago, and it might surprise you to learn that she's a professional athlete. And despite her lack of self-care, she still likes to spout a lot of statistics about fat women, despite being corrected on this by Destiny on her live stream. There's a lot of fat people. Mean, fat no, people women, stay with women, fat people. But women by and large are fatter than men. No. Women, and if you go in the U.S., the woman's always fatter. The BMI. Okay. So in the U.S., statistics. the average BMI for a man is 26.6, and the average BMI for a woman is 26.5. Oh, I stand corrected. But even after he corrected her, she continued to misrepresent the statistic. How can we say that as a whole, in the U.S. and the West, we're good wives? when 80% of us are overweight, and that's the number one thing that men value. There's a lot of room for improvement with Western women. 70% of us are overweight. The average man makes more than the average woman, but the average woman is fatter than the average man. So in the US, the average BMI for a man is 26.6, and the average BMI for a woman is 26.5. Oh, I stand corrected. Hi everyone, this is me in the middle of editing. Pearl got banned off of TikTok, so I've had to go into the internet archive to pull up the timeline for you guys because I can't prove it on the live site. But you can see she's wearing the same top that she talks about the false obesity statistic. And you can see the date here is 314. Destiny corrected her much before that, so just wanted to show proof of that. When I was doing research, I also happened to have made a note about the timeline because I had a feeling that she was regurgitating the statistic even after she was corrected, and it turned out I was correct, so just wanted to post the proof in here. Pearl speaks on men valuing attractiveness, purity, and youth, and says in order to get a high value husband, or husband at all, you should be those things. Men value purity and youth. Yeah. Purity, youth, beauty. Pearl fails to meet these standards herself despite wanting to get married so badly. Apparently, if I want results in life, I have to start talking to boys. Yeah, wife me up if you're, if you're in the London area. You know? In terms of purity, Pearl's not a virgin. In fact, she's so reluctant to say her body count that she's willing to just lie. How many people have you slept with? Do you hear this out? <laughs> no. You ask everybody that. And you don't say your own number? <laughs> what? Um, no, I don't ask everyone. I don't think I've ever asked. No, I don't even ask body count. It's Would you say your body count? I, I don't know. No, no, <laughs> no, I don't even ask. Um, I'll always say how many bodies is too many bodies. So I have a question. Would you guys say your body count? No. So if it doesn't matter, like, why don't people just say it? She chose to lie because she felt embarrassed. And despite Pearl preaching about the importance of women's chastity, 
Pearl actually wanted to partake in hookup culture. But I swear to God, like, guys don't try to sleep with me. Really? <laughs> like, 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 I swear to God, I've been on a date, and I, w I would have been dead, and he just never tried. I was like, oh, okay. okay. And then they told the guy didn't even touch me once. Yeah. He didn't touch me once, and I'm like, yeah. Hey, I don't really have guys approach me often. It, it could be the clothes. It seems like she barely knew him and wanted to hook up with him, but he didn't want to. So, according to Pearl, I guess we shouldn't be taking taking her advice, considering that she can't attract men even for casual encounters. I've noticed a lot of therapists are like older single women. And I'm kind of like, if you can't maintain a relationship, why would I take advice from you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, this is just something I've noticed. Um, it, uh, but I, again, I haven't spent a ton of time in therapy, but then like, and then I'm like, yeah, like, why would I take advice from you if you can't maintain a relationship? And she thinks what's holding her back is the fact that she's like six feet tall. I would say if there's one thing that's held me back in dating, it is the height. But I think it's because of her desperation and they can sense it along with her low standards. And you know, if a guy has all the, th like all the things that you look for, he might cheat. Yeah. So how can I, how can I be that mad if he cheats when it's like I picked him? Mm. Would you accept? if he's just stepping up but not uh, getting anyone pregnant are you're we married in, no you're in a relationship i think if i'm being truly honest with myself for the right guy i probably would how many times i don't know how many times does... she's basically announcing to the world hey i'm pearl i'll tolerate cheating please marry me so imagine the kind of men she's attracting and it seems like her dating life in general just has not gone well he was older than me oh, okay so he he did girlfriends before me Two weeks after, like, we ended it, mm -hmm. he starts dating a new girl. Like, I think he's going to marry that girl or did. I don't really know. Yeah. yeah, I was, like, obsessed. I was so sad because I I felt like I waited because I was almost – I was a sophomore in college when I lost my virginity. So I was, like, halfway okay. through college. It's late. Yeah. You know it's not about you. It's – I'm, I'm going to drop something. It's the timing. Well, no, no, no. It actually – it was because he literally, like, went on to marry the next girl. So something – but it's funny because no. the girl – the girl was older than me. So by the Manosphere's perspective, like, I would have won. Pearl even acknowledges that things don't work out as they do on paper, but she continues to influence people to do immoral, pathological behaviors in order to demonize women for clicks and views. In Pearl's world, if the wife puts the husband in question in a bad position and takes this kid away, then it's her fault. It only takes one time to to ruin a guy's life where she can literally take half and take the kids. I like, agree. how is he supposed to protect the? How is he supposed to protect the children when legally she can take them and she's paid to take them away from yeah. him? But that same empathy is nowhere to be found if the wife is put in a bad position by the husband. Okay, so then you pick guys that cheat. It says something about your decision making if you become a single mother. If the woman leaves, it's because she's just trying to take the man's money because she's an unreasonable, home-wrecking gold digger. She can take them and she's paid to take them away from yeah. him. But if a woman decides to make her own money, well, now she's emasculating her husband and causing the divorce. Or one of the number one reasons for divorce is financial and also when women out earn men. The irony of Pearl dehumanizing women on her channel is that her entire channel's premise is to focus on the injustices against men and how women aren't empathetic enough to them. And Pearl doesn't like when this happens to her. For example, Pearl went on a podcast and told her story about how her male role model in her life her coach who worked one-on-one -on -one with her since she was 14 turned out to be a groomer. Because I remember saying, like, you can tell me stuff you don't, like, you don't tell your parents. I remember looking at him like a dad, like, for a while because I saw him so much. He he told me before I went to college, like, that I was going to get a bunch of attention from boys because of my butt. And as soon as she turned 18, he tried to sleep with her and shove alcohol down her throat. Which, by the way, for those of you that don't know, the legal drinking age in America is 21. And he's like, oh, come take a shot at the gym with me. So I think I was 18 or 19 when this happened. And at first I was like, oh, no, I'm not trying to drink tonight because it was, like, my finals week. That was why I was home. But he kept, like, going yeah. at it then so then he goes you know like hannah because my first name's hannah yeah. the gym the gym's empty right now we, we could do anything you want i'm like what, what do you mean marcus he texted me so he said um he said come back to the gym tonight and i said for what and then he said like um nothing just sex. the issue i had was he was waiting till girls turned 18 to try to hook up with him a couple years later i find out 
he is going to be a coach at my high school on the track team and my sister's going to run track. So I was like, oh hell no. But I actually didn't, I didn't get him fired till years later because my mom told me not to. And then in the interview, she goes on to talk about how the Manosphere blamed her for this, even though her coach was double her age. Like I can tell they're from the Manosphere comment because I've told this story on like a TikTok before. Yeah. And th it's weird. They blame you. Like they put the, you, the 17, 18 year old. Uh, yeah, I can like, see. Why did you put yourself in that situation? Oh, you <clears throat> liked the attention. Da, 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 da. Pearl has firsthand experience in the consequences of demonizing the other gender. And considering she went through something so terrible, you would think she would be empathetic. But instead, she's so profit driven that if somebody else told her this same story, she would side with the predator. She seems to give no nuance and no defense of women, no matter what the situation is, even if what happened happened when they were children. I'm pretty sure social media is like some of the most damaging stuff for young girls in middle school and high school because of how much like information they're bombarded with in terms of beauty standards and how they look. But you guys are like, well, but Instagram helps them get flown out to Dubai. So I think like <laughs> it does. You know, it's like totally, totally disconnected from like the real world. I mean, it also lets you catfish the hell out of men <laughs> like with these freaking Instagram filters. It's based mm -hmm. on the media that they consume and the mm -hmm. thing images around them. Like that's it's just like, absolutely boom, true. Freaking who? Like what happened to the accountability? She's holding the kids more accountable than she She's holding the men for not checking if it's a real person or not. Maybe it's because she's biased and she got catfished. I don't know. So yeah, clearly Pearl has no issues holding even little girls accountable over men. And when it comes to women, Pearl will say things like, you shouldn't talk about the exceptions, only talk about the rule. You know, some people mm -hmm. might get married and the husband dies mm -hmm. and they become a single mother. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, right, there's... But we're not talking about exceptions, we're talking about the rule. Are the majority of single mothers widows? No. But that changes at Pearl's convenience. You can't talk about nuances unless it demonizes women. You've never heard of cases where women don't let the dad see the kid. Earlier, you you've said never, we were going to talk never. about exceptions. You want to talk right. about the rules. So don't okay. give me the hide and go seek no. with the kid. How I mean, often do you think a mom is hiding the kid from the I, husband? Give me a percentage. Um, I don't know. Before on her channel, she actually used to be more nuanced and actually criticized the manosphere for not acknowledging exceptions. You know, I know that one girl that makes more money than her husband or what, whatever the exception is to the rule um, and we see it I think more often than the manosphere really gives credit to I think in general men don't want to date single mothers but I know a lot of single mothers that got remarried she was even willing to have her virgin friends come on the show to explain their perspective and why they wouldn't sleep with someone with a high body count like the host of fresh and fit I'm probably gonna have a couple friends that waited till they were married to have s on my podcast to actually talk about what they look for in guys. Then only a month later, she starts regurgitating Manosphere talking points. If you get married and it doesn't work out, like women <laughs> can and will take all of your money. Pearl doesn't like when you go, but men in response to her. And whenever we talk about where the women need to improve, we always need to point the finger at the men. But the reason people go, but what about men, is because she doesn't seem to address the other half of the equation. Women haven't single-handedly made men cheat, cause obesity, or cause divorce, but Pearl will take it and spin it in a way to where women are the blame and men don't take any accountability for it. For example, 80% of women initiate divorce is something she will say in order to blame women. But women initiating divorce doesn't necessarily mean that they were in the wrong. If it were the other way around, I just know that Pearl would spin it as men are leaving modern women because they're low value. I mean, she already does this with passport bros. Are Western women typically known as good wives? Are they sought after all over the world? Or are men getting their passports and going elsewhere? It's not 100% of the woman's fault, and if you don't address even the 10% of the time where it's the man's fault, then you're not really solving anything. She's radicalizing people because she's making them mad about problems while giving them no solutions, and it's not really helping anyone. 
And as she makes things worse, she just gets to sit there and collect money off of people's negative emotions. Girl asserts that her focus on addressing women exclusively is due to the fact that they're never held accountable. Because she's holding women solely responsible for every issue, she's just perpetuating the issue that she claims to be trying to solve. If she had a more balanced consideration of everyone, then perhaps she would actually get something solved. And she does this a lot by misrepresenting statistics in order to poorly portray women. For example, Pearl talks about how 20% of men aren't even the father of their children. And they say that 20% of men are raising a kid that's not theirs. That's why they don't want a promiscuous woman. They're afraid they're going to pass the resources onto the wrong, um, onto a kid that's not theirs. Well, unknowing or knowing? Not or not knowing. So how do they get the statistic? I don't know. It's DNA test. Much like the feminist that Pearl criticizes, I've never seen her cite where she gets her data from. And that's the same thing as lying in the science world because she's making it impossible to even fact check her. I have to just guess what study she's talking about. And I think she's basing it on this 1999 report. It's by the American Association of Blood Banks, and it's over two decades old, which is way too old for a study like this to be relevant. And the 20% claim that Pearl made doesn't actually represent the population. It's actually much lower. They were testing men that were already not sure if they were the dad, meaning that the study was biased. In order for it to not be biased, it would have to be randomized or tested at birth. The vast differences in non-paternity rates across different populations is also not taken into account. This is relevant information, especially considering that Pearl's podcast is based in London, even though she's from America, so how are we supposed to know where she's even talking about? Depending on what country you're looking at, the percentages are all different and significantly lower than what Pearl was saying. Another example of Pearl misrepresenting data in order to demonize women is her saying that women primarily divorce men for money. Yeah, I want to get married. Of course I want to get married. But like, if I was a guy, I would have a really hard time with it. And you could say it's the type of woman, but 50% of marriages end in divorce. Women leave the majority of the time. I don't think it's the type of woman. I think it's that they're paying women to leave. Or one of the number one reasons for divorce is financial and also when women out earn men. But the top reason for divorce on every site that I've checked didn't have that as even the top four. And while I was researching this, I actually found data citing that women who divorced in the previous 12 months were more likely than recently divorced men to be in poverty, 20% compared to 11% respectively. If I were doing what Pearl does, I could easily utilize that data to say that 80% of women are leaving men because men can't satisfy women. But hey, at least I'm telling you where I got the data from, unlike her. I would have thought someone as rich as her would have the resources to be able to check the statistics she's saying, especially considering she's on her dad's dime. Number one, I'm sorry I'm not a brokey. My dad yells at me for accounting every month and I have to like organize like business expenses versus personal. Um, so my dad does yell at me when I pull out cash when you can't see what you spend it on. Pearl reminds me of Pearl from SpongeBob asking her dad, Mr. Krabs, for money. How much is all this costing me? Here's the receipt. <laughs> I ought to... Oh, daddy, you got me everything I wanted. She also reminds me of Mr. Krabs' daughter because he wants her to be a star and he's paying her way to do so. Being a little YouTuber is tough. I'm really tired of being broke, dad. A quarter mile. I can't mooch off of you forever. My little girl is finally a star. Give me a K, are you? I'm sure that Pearl understands the real world struggles of the average person from her 10 bedroom mansion. You guys wanna, you want the house tour? But clearly there is one thing that money cannot buy, and that thing is taste. This video is from Pearl's channel called Wife School. In the first episode, she and Allie, known as Real Femme Sapien on YouTube, meet up to improve on Pearl's fashion, along with a male stylist who is supposed to be helping Pearl attract a husband by improving her outfits. So let's take a look at some of the outfits he puts her in. Perfect for a night out on the town. I'll do the full twirls. <laughs> this dress looks like a trash bag. 
It's unflattering on her because it's showcasing her stomach, which is not what she should be highlighting. Not only that, but the black is washing her out, making her look very drained, especially considering the fact that she normally doesn't wear makeup. Going without makeup is a personal choice and it's fine, but if you're gonna do that, you need to know your color palette or you will look even more tired and sickly when you wear the wrong colors. I'm going to go ahead and explain a little bit of color theory to you guys. Color season is a system that utilizes color theory to categorize where each person falls under in order to easily find out what colors look good on them. It's based on how their skin's undertones interact with other colors, and that involves how light or dark their skin is relative to the hair and eye color. If you have warm undertones in your skin, you'll look more yellow with green veins in your wrist. And if you're cool tone, you'll look more pinkish or reddish with blue veins on your wrist. If you have a warm undertone, you should wear warm colors. If you have cool undertones, cool tone colors will suit you best. You have to have a trained eye to be able to see it in some cases, but Pearl is cool toned as you can see with her pink flush in her skin. Pearl is either a light summer because of her cool tone coloration, or she would be a light spring because it's right next to light summer in the color wheel. It's a little hard to tell on the internet, but I know for sure she's on that side of the color wheel. If you look at someone and the first thing you see is their outfit's color instead of their own natural coloration and features, then you're wearing the wrong colors. The stylist doesn't apply this knowledge or even utilize basic color theory, and instead, he takes her to a cheap, fast fashion store like Zara. If he were actually good at his job, he would not be making these mistakes. If money were an issue, which clearly for Pearl it's not, there are better budget-friendly places you could go to for higher quality clothes. For example, go thrifting. But yeah, clearly Pearl doesn't need to go thrifting. He could have just taken her to a higher end mall or a department store. Honestly, he just does her dirty the entire time. That's super cool. That looks really nice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What kind of, where would I go with this outfit? I think, you know, I think that could be an afternoon. I think that could be an evening outfit. I mm -hmm. think you could, you could go out in Shoreditch wearing that. You could go to Canary Wharf to one of the bars down there. Mm -hmm. Meet some nice high value guy. He looks at her with a straight face, telling her she's going to meet a high-value guy in this outfit. Oh, it'll look nice going out for errands and having a nice dinner. He's just talking out of his ass. So what do we rate this, one to 10? <sighs> I reckon it's a high eight. Like, I don't know how a stylist can honestly rate these outfits so high. Oh, that's, now it, now it's good. Now it's Spin, working. spin, not too fast. Okay. <laughs> He must think that she's a dumpster because he keeps putting her in trash bags. Because he's done it now like three or four times in this video. And he's not highlighting any of the flattering parts of her body, which defeats the entire purpose of having a stylist help you. There are several different body shapes, but for Pearl, she holds most of her weight proportionately in her arms and in her stomach. And that should have been taken into consideration when he was dressing her. Regardless, if she loses weight, her proportions will stay the same relative to her other body parts. You can bring balance back to the body by drawing the attention to the most attractive body parts and away from the least attractive ones using color, patterns, texture. But of course, he would know that if he actually knew what the hell he was doing as a stylist. It is honestly just so frustrating watching him not look smacks her. In this outfit, the skirt does not work. Pearl could have put on some jeans with a wider cut at the bottom to balance her upper, heavier half, or she could have put on a skirt that was A-line, high-waisted, and above the knee, but in middle of the thigh, not too short, would have done the trick to bring attention to her legs and away from her stomach. Like I'm it. pulling in the back because it's too big. That is, though, aside, size aside, that is, that's pretty cool, but that is proper like New Year's Eve party type. Yes. Should I wear yes. for New Year's Eve get it fitted? Or let yeah. Me yeah. You see how he literally highlights her stomach with bright green sparkles? I, I can't take this anymore. And then he has the audacity. He must have got it from Pearl. The audacity to suggest for her to tailor a Zara dress that won't survive 
one wash. Literally go watch a fashion channel. Go watch Ali Art on YouTube and then come back to us when you actually know how to do your job. And it's not just her frumpy style that's preventing her from looks maxing. It's also her presentation with her hair. She's not bothering to style it. And many people are even commenting about it under her TikTok telling her to brush her hair. Girl's hair just needs a haircut with some texturing to give it volume so that it's not so stuck and flat to her head. Her hair is very manageable. How is she going to teach other women how to attract a husband when she doesn't even put the minimal effort in her own appearance? No, I've noticed a lot of therapists are like older single women. And I'm kind of like, if you can't maintain a relationship, why would I take advice from you? <laughs> so if she wants to be taken seriously, she should care about her overall presentation, including her fashion, hairstyle, her attitude, and bodily self-care. This situation is so deeply embarrassing and desperate. She has no business telling other women how to attract a husband. I wanted to give Pearl credit for trying to improve on her fashion, but she makes it really hard to do so when even months after this video, she continues to show up on camera with her hair undone, unbrushed, stuck to her head, no volume, and having naughty stains on her clothing. So I'll just have to instead give Pearl credit for trying to learn how to cook on her wife's school channel because it appears she does not know how to. She hasn't been able to attract the men she wants to hook up with her. She hasn't been able to attract a boyfriend and she doesn't even live by her own standards about presentation. You know who else doesn't adhere to their own standards and the gender they're attracted to isn't attracted to them? Male feminist. Pearl reminds me a lot of a male feminist. She uses a lot of their tactics, such as misrepresenting statistics, but unfortunately, we still live in a broken system that says that my work as a white male is worth 46 cents more to the dollar than an equally qualified Hispanic woman. Pearl is willing to accept degrading behavior like being cheated on because she is desperate to attract men. Yeah, that male feminist thing. I've known a few that were real creeps. They put these women on a platform and worship these women and they don't run fast. They can't pick things up. They're not attractive. So they try to, they're little weasels. They're trying to find another way in. Pearl doesn't know how to attract men with her social skills, her appearance, or with skills like cooking. What percent of women have cookbooks? It's probably because we have the internet for recipes now, Pearl. But yeah, basically, I think that Pearl has had to resort to these desperate behaviors because she does not embody what men are attracted to. So she has to do things like agree to men cheating on her and degrading herself in order to get a man. It's very desperate. I am not like those other guys. <laughs> And back to her business really quick in regard to her tactics. Her tactics remind me a lot of legacy media in how she fear mongers people in order to make money. I have watched a lot of Pearl's content and I've never seen her give a point to the other side. There is a huge lack of nuance when it comes to her channel. In fact, anytime someone on Pearl's show wants to give nuance, she will not let them do so unless it benefits men. If we spent this podcast talking about the exceptions, we'd be here all day. We didn't even get nowhere. Yeah, mm. there, there would be no point in having a conversation. We well, still need to mention them. Yeah, why? There's no, no point. No, we it don't. It's my show. Value to the conversation. And she will go as far as to bait her guest into giving more polarizing, extreme answers. Whose beauty standards are higher, men or women? I think it depends. Okay. Wait, I want to make a rule. No, it depends. Pick one and tell me why. Um, Pearl has gained the entirety of her 1 million subscribers from her fear-mongering, lies, and black and white thinking over just this past year. Pearl teaches men to act like hyper-selfish sociopaths, luring them down the dark path of loneliness, unhealthy relationships, and broken homes. Men taking her advice will result in the same situations that she criticizes women for. Pearl also doesn't teach women to have healthy boundaries, also leading them to the same fate. Taking Pearl's advice will reward you in a worldview as warped as hers with black and white thinking in our grayscale reality. Yeah. Like, you're going to be okaying what he does. He's going to be okaying what you do. Mm -hmm. That has nothing to do with masculinity or femininity or anything like that. That's just like two adults having a relationship, figuring out what the boundaries are. You guys talk about things that are basic relationship norms, but you like frame them in the most toxic way possible. I don't understand. If you do take one piece of advice away from Pearl, 
Let it be this. No, I've noticed a lot of therapists are like older single women. And I'm kind of like, if you can't maintain a relationship, why would I take advice from you? <laughs> this video took so long to make. I have never researched so much for a video before. So if you do like the content and appreciate me researching her, watching her content for two weeks, consider supporting me on Locals or on Patreon because I am community funded. Thank you so much to my producers on Patreon. And also, if you guys haven't noticed yet, I have deleted the tweet on my Twitter, so I should be back on Twitter when this video comes out. I figured that I could do more good on the platform by being on it than not being on it for now. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.